What's the passion you need to survive? Do you have what it takes to survive? You being here might make you think that you do know what it takes to survive. And you being here is clearly a sign of, of that you're still alive, right? It's also a sign that you happen to be born on a planet where the natural community of life is able to support human life, your life. It's also a sign that your ancestors, all of your ancestors, managed to survive, at least until they reproduced at least once. And it's a sign that you've been really lucky, that you have a privilege, that you can even afford time-wise to come here and look at this talk. And it's for sure also a sign that suicide is not high on your to-do list. So do you actually have what it takes to survive? Um, I'm asking this because I would like to be sure that you do not rely on me if we ever end up in a survival situation together. I'm asking this because I want to be sure that you do not eat me if we end up in a survival situation together. So, do you have what it takes to survive? What is that even? Would you even be able to identify a survival situation? Do you know how to take care of your six survival priorities? Do you even know them? Let's take a look at this together and find out what our situation is like. Here you see Earth. This is the place what is our common ground. This is the place where your survival is possible. And I should say survival, the meaning of the word survival is it's the art of continuing to live. And to con continue to live, you need to take care of your six survival priorities in a sufficiently sustainable manner. Let's take a look at these six survival priorities, just in case you have, they have slipped your mind. So food and water, they might be obvious, air, shelter, and then we have health and community. And it depends on the situation which one is higher on your list of priorities. Usually they don't have a specific order. Let's take a look at food, for example. You might feel that you get more energy back from eating your food than what you personally invested. And that's an important one. We need to get more energy back from eating the food than what we invest to get the food. Otherwise, we would lose weight, get weak, get sick, make mistakes, be tired. Our immune system will be less strong and we will die eventually. So how is it with your food? How much energy do you outsource? Energy that you do not invest yourself, but energy that we as a community of humans invest. The energy and resources, of course, to build and run the fishing vessel, to, to catch the tuna and process it and transport it and sell it and store it and package it and heat it up so that it can up, end up on your pizza, maybe. Please do not panic now, because I'm going to break to you that probably none of the foods that you are eating on a frequent basis has an energy input-output in your favor. And we cannot ignore this, because as you can see, this is one planet. It's a closed system. And as I said, to survive, 
you need to take care of your six survival priorities in a sufficiently sustainable manner. And if one or more of our six survival priorities are not taken care of, then we have a survival situation. If, of course, they are well taken care of, all is good. And this is where it starts to get interesting between you and me. Because suddenly we do find ourselves in a survival situation together. So, please do not eat me yet. <laughs> Let me hear out first. Um, hear me out first. Our situation is a bit, let's, let's say it's a bit fucked up. And there's no one to blame. Partly there might be, and it might feel easy to blame. At the same time, we already were born into a situation where we have climate change, where we do have um, mass extinction right, of species. We have biodiversity loss on a scale that is threatening to our species, right? If one of the over 100 species that we lose every day due to human behavior mostly is a species that our species depends on, like mosquitoes, human life without mosquitoes up here in the subarctic would not be possible, then we have a problem. If we use more energy and resources than we actually need to survive, then we have a problem because it's one planet, it doesn't... Where should it come from? So the situation that we have been born into is somehow comparable to being born onto a sinking ship. And the ship is sinking by definition if more water is getting in than what is coming out. So if we pump and shovel water out, but we keep drilling holes and more water is coming in, it doesn't look so good. So as our ship stops sinking if we turn that around. And if we stop ripping wood out of the hull of our ship to burn it into our engines to run in ever faster circles. And this is easier said than done. Drilling a hole into our ship is just so easy. It was, since my birth, it was advertised to me to behave in ways that is comparable, or is the same as drilling holes. Ways that are legal and considered normal. Flying for holiday, cruise ships, eating avocado in the place that our species calls Finland. And there are a lot of behaviors that really are more part of the problem than part of the solution. And we might feel powerless to change this. You might feel paralyzed. You might feel that you rather want to ignore this. Then again, ignoring this would be accepting negligent suicide, because this is what I call this. This is the opposite of survival, is what we're doing in the moment. And Yet I'm here, convinced, not just trying, pretending, I'm convinced that we can turn this around because as a wilderness guide, I see that survival is so easy. We can do it naked, right? Most of our ancestors, they did it naked as they were born. We are still being born naked. Things didn't change so much. Nature is still the only place on earth. And that's the thing. This is, this is the crucial part where I believe we can change the story. When we understand and feel that we nature are what matters. When we understand and feel that wherever we are is nature, wherever we can die is nature. Inside of us, there are a couple of kilos of other organisms that behave totally wild. Organisms without who we would die. Or organisms that might actually kill us also. Nature is very fair. It's extremely honest. It might be very cruel at times, but it's very fair and honest. Very humble. 
So what do we do with this information? What do you do with this information? I believe that to survive, it's not about having the most skills. I believe that to survive, it's good, essential, extremely beneficial, very easy and totally necessary to invest ourselves in community. I mentioned community as a survival priority. And it's the only survival priority that we can take care of just by investing ourselves. And by developing a passion, a deep love for this community. And this community includes the human species. This community goes beyond the human species. This community is the community of life on our planet. And being in love with this community, feeling passionate about life, that is the passion we need to survive. So I'm asking you, do you have this passion? Do you go this extra step and say, I'm not happy with this suicide that we are currently doing, that we slipped into? And we are currently talking about what we can do and how can we do it. Mostly we talk about carbon. The situation is a bit bigger, luckily. And we, we are still fighting wars over human-made borders. Nobody can win in this. So, take a look at this passion. What does it mean? To me, it means asking questions. To me, it means devoting myself to serve our community, to serve the well-being of life in all its diversity. Because my life is only possible because of the community of life. I am because life is as it is. And that makes it, to me, a no-brainer to also make the community of life, the well-being of life in all its diversity, my number one priority, even higher than my own personal survival. And that's it. That's what I feel is the passion that you and me we all need to survive. It's not about the what we can do and how we can do it. It's about the why we do it. And if we have this shared why on our common ground, which is right here under our feet, as our own personal number one priority, as a destination, then I believe we will reach it. We just need to go all in. That's what life is all about. Thank you.